Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I am Marshall here at Garage Time TV and today we are jumping back on our Bertoni X19 project. Now last week we didn't have a video. I had to go out of town uh, for work, so I wasn't able to get content out and created for you guys just because I wasn't here. But there's no plans on the schedule to get out of town anytime soon. Cross your fingers that that doesn't happen. But as of right now, it is not on the schedule, so we should be able to keep rocking and rolling on this project. Now, last episode, so two weeks ago, we put on our big brake kit, so our front brakes are nice and modern brakes. We also put our new adjustable coilover suspension in, and that is installed. Then we have our new wheels and tires. Uh, these are the torsion wheels from Vic Autosports. I am absolutely in love with these things, and I think they look really, really good on the car, and I can't wait to see them rolling down the road. And that, it's going to be our absolute ultimate goal today for this video. But before we can even hit the road, we need to make sure that we get this dialed in. Now the last video is running not good at all. So we've got to make some adjustments. I know we've got to do some timing adjustments um, and double check a couple things and we're going to go through all that. But first things first is I want to grab a timing light, start timing this because I want to get this on the road. Now we're not going to go super far. This is missing a couple other things, you know, engine lid, flump, front blinkers, front blinkers, English. It's, it's hard. Front blinkers need to be installed and a couple other things to make sure we are fully legal and safe here in the state of Texas. So let's get a timing light on this. We'll do a quick lap around the block if we can get this time just right. We're gonna look at the manual, make sure we are doing that all correctly. And we'll hit the road and see if we can get some uh, good uh, movements out of this and get some rolling shots and, and really enjoy this car for the first time and I don't know the last time this was on the road is probably I don't know seven eight ten years ago so it'll see some road and some asphalt for the first time in a long time so first things first let's grab our timing light and see what our timing is at right now and we'll make some adjustments there Now a couple things that we need to do before we really jump into timing is our distributor. Well, let's start with the with the good stuff with what the manual says. So the manual, which if you need a copy, this is at Fic Auto. They have them on their website. I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to get yours. But on page 00-5, our ignition timing is 10 degrees behind top dead center, which gives us 800 to 850 RPMs. And our total timing which is the ignition timing plus our advance would be 6, 26 to 30 at 3,500 RPMs. So we'll actually be able to read that because this is an adjustable uh, timing light here. We'll be able to see what our total advance is when we get to that point. But what we need to do here is this is actually a timing mark on the top here. There's three 10 millimeter bolts. You can actually remove this um, to get the timing mark. And it will be on this pulley here, this top pulley. This is for your valves, the camshaft, and there will be a little white mark that I've already put on there, so I'd have to roll it over. But we'll remove this cover, we'll get that to where the timing marks are lined up, and we'll pop our cap off uh, and see where we're at, and then we'll be able to uh, make adjustments from there. So we've got our timing marks lined up. There is a little notch on the front of the cam gear. Um, and so I translated that to the back and that's what lines up here. Uh, so this is, uh, if you look at this mark here and our actual timing marks are down on the tab where our crank pulley is. But of course it's really kind of tough to see from here, especially timing wise. So this is much easier to time off of and they, uh, they're correlated, so they're, they're matching. So there's another way to actually see it on the back side of the transmission. Let me grab a light and I'll show you there's actually a mark on the flywheel back here to ensure you're at top dead center. All right, I'm gonna do my absolute best to show you these marks, but you can probably see straight in the middle of your screen. I'll see if I can circle it for you. There's a zero, a five, and a 10 if the light isn't flooded out. How about something like that? Zero, five, and 10. And through that little viewing window, there's a little rubber plug that plugs that viewing window. And they have timing marks, there's a zero, there's a five and there's a 10. Well, on the flywheel, there's actually a dot or a little nick in it that marks where the timing is on the flywheel. So you have two points of reference, three actually. This one here, and you've got the one on our cam pulley up here. And you see when we get that one lined up, we're just slightly in front of it. 
Well, that actually makes sense because this thing has been like whammy before. So if this was probably straight and where it was supposed to be, then it would probably be right there. And then we've also got our main tiny marks down on our crankshaft. So you have three points of contact to make sure that you are at TDC. I like to use the one on the flywheel because those are bolted in position on the crankshaft. And that tells us exactly where TDC is. So I like to go off that back one there. This makes you put the plug back in so you don't get a bunch of debris in the back side of your flywheel and into your clutch. But I like to use that as my mark. So we're gonna have to take note that it's really just a little ahead of our mark, maybe like half a tooth. So when you get in close, you'll see we're only about half a tooth off as far as our mark. But again, it's been dented and you know, not the most beautiful thing ever. But at least that's some point of reference. And we can go down and look at our tummy marks on the bottom there as well, but that should be matching um, with this all together. So let's pop our cap and see where we're at. So our cap is pointed at that far left, top left corner. And what I like to do is actually put a little Sharpie mark where the middle of this road or where that circle is. I make a mark straight down and, and then I'll remove this plate here, just a little cover to access it. And I'll put a little Sharpie mark on the inside of the cap. That way I point, okay, number four is here, comes straight down, it's here. Then I translate that to the outside of the cap. I match it up with the line on the distributor as well. And that's how I know when my cap and everything is lined up with number four. So we are all set to go. Now that is at zero degrees advance. That is straight at zero, that is nothing. But this, according to the manual, says that we need to be at five degrees behind top dead center which means that this needs to be 10 degrees backwards. So if we use that same reference point on the back of our flywheel, that's why it's got a zero, a five, and a 10, is we'll use that 10 right there and line up our dot to that 10. And that's how we know we're 10 degrees behind top dead center. And we should be able to fire off relatively simply, simply, you know, fiat things as simple as it is. And we should be able to get at least a good starting point there and then the manual also said it's gonna be plus or minus one and a half degrees. So we may be at 10 degrees, we may be at eight and a half, we may be as much as 12 degrees advanced, but that's what our timing light is for, is we're gonna tweak that distributor just a little bit to get that really dialed in. So let's get some of the stuff out of the engine bay, plug in our timing light, and uh, see how we do on this first initial fire off since you know, getting it all straight. So as we're getting everything kind of locked down here is you may have to re-stab your distributor or if you're putting your distributor in for the first time, it's a really good way to mark it up and make sure that you're all lined up on the front and back side to make sure everything correlates. Make sure your cap is on there nice and tight. And what we're gonna do is just go forward. You never wanna turn this backward. So if you turn this backward, you run the risk of damaging some valves because the engine's not designed to turn that way. So. Go forward, take your time. It's gonna take a couple extra cranks. I mean, get a socket on there if you have to. You can go from the flywheel if you want. I go from the cam. I know some people are gonna blow up in the comments. You're gonna damage your cam. It's not meant for that. Look, it's it's gonna be fine. It's, it's just to turn it over three quarters of a turn. We're not going to full rotation. We just wanna get that 10 degrees behind top dead center mark, line it to the tab on our flywheel. We're just gonna use this, get it lined up, see where we're at. So we went our rotation around and we're getting close to the 10 degrees behind top dead center. I'm gonna get that lined up here really quick. It's kind of hard to do with you guys, as you can tell, the picture quality is not that great. And the light kind of washes it out. And I'm gonna get it set up I'm gonna take my phone and I'll get pictures of it and I'll show you pictures here on the screen. So I actually found a better picture online of the zero, five and 10 degree timing marks based on the flywheel. Again, that's gonna be like your most accurate, most accurate um, way to set your 10 degrees behind top dead center, five and zero. So we have ours at exactly 10, but let me show you that picture first. So with ours looking like that, our marks actually basically line up. So if these line up, that means we're at 10 degrees behind top dead center, which kind of works out. So those are lined up. There's actually a mark on the back of this as well. So if you look at it from this side, there's a mark and we've got a mark here on the front. 
So that is gonna tell us where we're at. So I'm gonna hook up just our jumper pack to power this because our battery's all the way in the front. I don't wanna drape a bunch of cords, especially power, to ground out on the car. So I'm just gonna run it off our jumper pack. We're gonna fire it up and uh, start seeing where we're at initially for our base and then we can make our adjustments. So I kind of realized that we're not gonna be able to adjust much timing if we can't get to our distributor. And to get to our distributor, we have to remove that plate. Well, that plate is behind our passenger seat, behind the spare where the computer lives. There's this access panel and I've got it there. It's four 10 millimeter nuts that hold that on against the firewall here. So it's just the back side there and you can access the distributor. There's a 13 millimeter nut that holds that down. But I took our cap off, so I figured this would be a good time to show you that mark on the distributor. So you see I've got a Sharpie mark where the middle of that distributor, where that circle is, lines up with that relative. So we've got plenty of room, so we've got it completely per uh, parallel to the firewall. And we've got that nut slightly loose, so that way we can do adjustments. Now you don't want it too loose because then it'll spin itself out of time. But you don't want it too tight to where you're fighting it and it jerks around when you're trying to do fine tune. So we've got this in an initial good start. We're going to put our cap back on. And then, then we will use our timing light. But I figured this would be some good tips for you guys. Um, so you can kind of see the other side rather than just from the top. But a lot of good adjustment can be done here. We'll adjust here. We'll check with the light. Do more adjustments, check with the light. But we'll be able to do all that here from the top when we put our cap back on, again, nice and centered. This is curved like that. So it's a little tough sometimes if your distributor is in the wrong spot, you'll end up running into this plate when you're trying to adjust your time. So that's why it's really important that you have that relatively parallel to the firewall because as we advance time, so as our distributor turns clockwise, advancing the time is counterclockwise. So if we're going, we're trying to fire the spark plugs before it reaches the top dead center. So as it comes into compression, it will fire and push back down in the most efficient as possible to give us that most amount of power. So it's really important that we come before, but if we go too far, we're pre-detonating and you'll hear some pinging and that's not good, you don't want that. So uh, then if to retard the timing would be to go with the distributor clockwise to slow down the timing. Anyway, I don't wanna to get too technical, but we're gonna try and go, that should be right where it's at, is 10 degrees behind top dead center, which means it should look like this, this white mark to this white mark, basically, when we put our timing light to it. And again, we're timing off number four, because that's what the manual calls for. Anyway, some good information here, I'm trying to get it back to the basics for you guys. If you're having first start issues, anything like that, this is kind of help you get down the road there. But anyway, let's get our cap back on, and then we can actually, for real this time, I promise, fire up our timing light and see where our baseline is. Since our cap is back on in the right spot, we've got our little Sharpie marks lined up on the cap, so we make sure we're nice and good. And our timing lights, our timing marks are lined up here as well. Again, this should be 10 degrees, but again, we've got our timing light hooked up here to number four. Let's give it a fire. Make sure everything is out of the way here so we don't get sucked in. That would be very bad. There we go. And uh, see how it comes out. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. All right, timing light. So what we're looking for is that white line. Let me see if I can get you a better look. Hopefully that shows up for you, a little white dot on the cam as it goes by. We're trying to get those lined up with that layer. Set you back down here. And if we turn our distributor, should be able to get that closer together. And you see how much better it runs. Oh yeah, right there. Let's see if I can get you guys closer. And you should see that, I don't know if the frames are gonna match the way that this is spinning, but you should see those white lines almost match up, which is exactly 10 degrees, which means that it's gonna be running so much smoother. And you can tell as soon as we adjusted that timing just a little bit, it got better. Much, much better, much happier. And you can see we're not getting a lot of vibration or shake, just a little bit here, from just, just not having any back support. But it's nice and smooth. 
and it sounds way better with this minor adjustment. So what we're gonna do is kill it. So we're gonna kill that. We're going to take the 13 millimeter nut, we're gonna lock that down and we're gonna check one more time because when you tighten that nut, oftentimes you can kick the distributor just a little bit and it'll knock it out of time. So we wanna make sure that we slowly bring that nut down. That way we don't mess up what we just set up. So that's a really good basic into initial timing. So what we're gonna do is again, lock that down and then uh, see if we can get some idle adjustment. I'll show you how to adjust the idle because our goal is right around 900 to 1000 RPMs uh, for the fuel injection. The manual will tell you 800 to 900. I like it just a little bit higher. Um, but we're gonna get that set. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So next on our list is to adjust that idle. So we're actually idling, took a quick peek at about 1500 RPM. So we're a little high and you could kind of hear that too. So you're gonna just need a couple things. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver. And we're gonna be making an adjustment here on the top of the intake. Now we'll crack this loose and we will turn it, oh, I think we turn it in, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll put it here on the screen, but I think we turn it in or either way, we're gonna hear it. So we'll turn it one way or the other and we'll actually hear our idle change. Now really you should be doing this with the temp, uh, engine at full temp operating temperature, meaning the fans come on, they cool themselves down, the fans come on again, and then they turn off, then you should be making this adjustment. But for our sake and for this example, I'm gonna show you how to make this adjustment. And you're just gonna crack this lock nut down we're gonna take our screw while it's running. It's gonna be kind of tough to yell at you while we do this. But I'm gonna make this adjustment. I'll put you guys on the stand, probably over there. So that way you can kind of see what's going on. Or maybe, maybe right here, maybe. How about that? Does that work? We'll try this. So I'll set you guys up here and I'll show you guys how to make this adjustment and we'll start hearing our RPMs change. Again, our goal is anywhere from 900 to 1000 RPMs. It's a little bit higher than what the manual calls for, but that's what's gonna be more enjoyable for me off the, off the clutch is a little bit higher RPM to get us going. So let me get you guys locked down here on the roof. And we're gonna start messing with this idle and fire back up. All right, so I've got you guys here on the roof set up. I grabbed a light, so it's a little bit brighter, but this is where we're gonna be looking. I'm gonna fire it up. We'll see how it looks now once it's set. You know, we locked down the distributor. We'll fire it up and we'll start making our adjustments here. Man, that fire up was great. You can tell the timing is set right. So you could see that our idle was changing quite a bit, uh, just messing with this screw here on the top. It was out a little far, so we took it all the way in and it will bottom out, but you don't wanna crank that down. There's actually a fine tip on the end of that. So you wanna make sure as soon as you feel it start to uh, get a little bit of pressure on it, you wanna stop. You don't wanna crank that down. So we put it all the way down and backed it off just about an eighth of a turn to where it's almost vertical. And that did pretty good for us. But one thing you also may notice is there's a small screw here where our accelerator linkage is. Well, that's a little stop screw on the bottom and there's a little pad that that lands on and that's an adjustment to keep your butterfly open. Um, and that's like a super fine adjustment. So you saw me kind of mess with that a little bit too. But as we're idling, we're sitting right at about a thousand. And again, we should be doing this with the engine completely warm, ready to go, driving conditions, twice over the fans kick on, stuff like that. But we're going to get in here and what I was watching was our tack, and now it's kind of hard because of the notorious needle bend. Wow, that fire up is great. 
but if you follow this straight across, we're basically at a thousand from what I can tell. But what I also want you to notice is how stable that is. That's not wiggling, that's not bouncing all over the place, it's not vibrating. Perfectly smooth straight across, which is fantastic. And we give it a little bit of fuel. Comes right back down to a nice smooth idle, perfectly smooth needle. Super, super nice. It's a pretty straightforward process, um, but it just takes some time. You've got to be patient. The next thing you've got to do is put that plate back on, the, the one that's behind the passenger seat there. We've got to put that back on. And that's also why it's really important that we have that nice and lined up so it'll fit right behind the distributor cap there. And we'll, we lock this one down, we lock that nut down. And I think this is to the point where we'll put the seat back, We'll clean off everything, we'll put our other cover back on, we'll clean up some of the mess we've made, and we'll take this out on the road, well, with you know, the bus back in the garage, we'll move the bus back out, and we'll go a lap. Now, I've got a big loop in my neighborhood, but I'll do my best to get some shots. Uh, school just let out, so we're gonna have to wait just a little bit to let everything kind of clear and traffic and everything, and see if we can make that big loop and get some good shots for you guys. But cross your fingers, put everything back together, clean up, and hit the road. A few moments later. Well, we've got the bus put back in the garage, ready to go. We've got the X all packed up, wallet, phone, keys, um, all that stuff. Got all of our camera gear to get a bunch of good shots and we're getting ready to, to fire it up and, and hit the streets. And then it's, it's gonna be hard to tell, but you know, nature doing its thing and raining on us, so we're gonna have to wait just a little bit. Hopefully it'll pass and we'll be able to get the X out today. So we're gonna have to put a pause, probably eat some dinner. That sounds good. You know, don't drive on an empty stomach. You won't drive for very long. You'll be stopping, so you don't wanna do that. So we'll eat, but otherwise I'm ready to get in this and drive it. I mean, this thing was sitting for a really long time. I wanna say like six, seven, maybe even 10 years with that locked up engine underneath that carport. Yeah, we're gonna wait. But uh, it was sitting forever, and now look at it, like two months ago, three months ago maybe, this thing was completely dead, sitting under a carport, covered in dust, and we saved it, and here we are getting ready to drive it for the first time, except for that. So we're gonna bring in the fan, wait a little bit, and then we're gonna give it a go once, you know, <clears throat> this does its thing. One hour later. So dinner is done, but the rain is not. So I think this is gonna have to go to tomorrow and we have to postpone this drive, which is unfortunate because I was really, really looking forward to driving this thing, but we have to wait till tomorrow. And I think this car is just the epitome of patience because it's just, you know, it's been sitting long enough and what's one more day? So we're gonna have to drive this thing tomorrow. I did take a minute and wipe down the windows so we can actually see through the glass. They were starting to get a little dusty from sitting here in the garage. We cleaned the glass and everything. So until tomorrow, we'll bring you guys back. We'll fire this thing back up. It'll be nice to see what it's like on a cold start after sitting all night and then after work tomorrow and we'll fire it up. Um, with this timing adjustment. So we'll see what it sounds like uh, on a cold start. Hopefully this thing will fire up just like it did after we got that timing locked down. So anyway, we're gonna uh, call it a night. Gonna go in, shower, and you know, unwind for a little bit. And then uh, tomorrow, no rain in the forecast. Tomorrow's the day. I feel it. The next day. All right guys, so it is now the next day and it is significantly drier and sunnier so we can actually hit the road so we're going to break out the x we're going to kind of move some stuff out of the way and we're going to do a cold start on this and back it down the driveway and we'll do my absolute best to get a bunch of shots for you guys as we go around the neighborhood a little bit again we're just going to be making some loops and stuff like that just to kind of try and break it in make sure our fans kick on just like they should when they should our thermostats opening all that good stuff uh, that we're charging oil pressure stays good, stuff like that. Make sure we don't have any funky noises. But again, we're gonna do a cold start. But first things first, let's get in it. 
set everything up, go set up the other camera at the end of the driveway, and then we can crank it and finally hit the road after way too much waiting. <sighs> All right. Time for a cold start. We got the camera set up behind us, so I'm not gonna give it any pedal or anything. Key. Not bad at all. That sounds good. All right, now let's hit the road. Safety first, gotta put the seatbelt on. All right, here we go. We're moving. Pull it, watch the wall. A little tight. That's what she said. <laughs> Fiat things. Brakes are working well. Clutch feels good. Doesn't feel super tight or anything like that. Right back down to a thousand. Don't kill it, don't kill it. It sounds like the third gear synchro is not quite happy. When I go into third, you hear a little grind, so I think the synchro gear is not agreeing with us. Still reading okay though. Temp is starting to slowly climb, which is good. It's at about 140. Oh, here we are going 30 miles an hour, so. Oh, I hear something like flapping back there. It's the sticker on our tire, our brand new tires. We've got the sticker still on there. All right, come up to another stop sign here. Back to a thousand. Blinkers are working. That sounds good. Wow, this is a little torquey. I don't know if it's because it's got these the Vic Auto open uh, the headers or the stainless headers. 
back to another stop sign. I don't know if because the headers allow them to breathe a little bit more. Again, this is just a stock engine. bit bigger road out here. Everyone's kind of looking at me weird, so I've got to like acknowledge that I acknowledge that they're looking at me weird. It's like, I know that you know that I know you think I'm weird. One of those kind of things. Come on, little forward, you can do it. sudden my blinker light on the dash started working. See? You just gotta drive them. You just gotta drive around. Blow the cobwebs out of them, you know? Ugh, construction. Doing pretty good, actually. I have no idea if the blinkers work or anything on this. Or my brake lights, I guess I should have text tested that too. Huh? We're gonna go, which way is this person behind me going? Because I don't want to go the way that they are. Bit of a grind on 
third gear, I really just think it's that synchro gear isn't very happy. Well, coming up to a light, so that's a start. So I think we're gonna go to the right. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna go this way. Because that's where everyone else is not going. Second. Oh, I did not do that gracefully. drive around, stretch some legs on this thing, since it has been, you know, maybe almost a decade since this thing has been on the road. So let's just enjoy it, and all that hard work is finally paying off. Been driving it around for a little bit and it's been doing really really good running just fine we're getting a little bit of a surge so i'm not quite sure what's going on there we may have a really small vacuum leak one of these vacuum lines may be cracked but our fans are running well they were running plus it just kicked off because we were driving it we got up to temp a little above hard to see with the light blinding you guys how about any of any of this better is this is this better how about now now there so the fan should be kicking on idling well oh. overall running really really well sounds good too well guys, this is going to be the end of the episode. We were able to set that initial timing and get everything lined up correctly while putting everything back, locking down the distributor, marking our cap up so we know where everything belonged, getting that set, and it sounded so much better as soon as we got that timing set correctly. And then we got rained out yesterday, which the timing couldn't have been any better on that. Yeah, not so funny, I know, but I couldn't resist. Anyway, we got to drive it today and there was hardly anybody on the road which was great and this thing runs fantastic the fans come on just like they're supposed to there's even like a fan that blows cool air over uh through like the tubing system in the back up and through that rear hatch access where the ac compressor is and it blows air like on the injectors and on that main tunnel there does that do anything uh, i don't know but it works and that's cool um, our blinker light on the dash decided to start working again. That wasn't flashing at all, but we used blinkers a couple times and decided to work. So this means that we've got to start working on a little bit more of the cosmetic stuff. So we've got to start putting that front bumper back on, because it's missing. And we definitely need to put our bumper on, and we've got our turn signals to install as well. And then what I'd really like to do is get a good, good deep detail on this thing so really wash it really get the inside nice and clean we've got some cheap seat covers on there right now just because they're a little dusty but we've got those on so we'll take those off we'll clean the seats there is a small tear so hopefully maybe that's something we can fix we'll see 
but I just want to make this thing look really, really good and get some of the staining out of it if we can, you know, buffing it and stuff like that. Um, and really getting that inside clean because this car is super, super good. And it's so good to see it on the road after all these years and all this work putting towards it. Those tires are slightly too big. I know a few people, a couple videos ago, said that the tires are too big, they stick out, it's not gonna work. What are you doing trying to rally this thing? Look, I like them, okay? I like the tires. And when you make a super sharp, as you max out the steering wheel, they touch. You can hear it, but that's not the end of the world and it's not a very common turn I'm gonna be doing. So, it's gonna be a little bit of rubbing. It's gonna happen, but that extra wide tire, super nice. But anyway, I'm super, super happy with this and I am just, I can't believe it's back on the road. Really, it's, it's awesome to see it alive again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys are like, commenting, and subscribing. Subscribing really, really helps the channel, so please make sure you do that. Only about 25% of the people that watch these videos are subscribed. So if you're one of those 75 that are not subscribed, you're really missing out and you need to do that. So please make sure you do that and hit the notification bell. That way you guys always know when new content comes out. Also check out our merchandise website. I've got a link down in the description down below. Uh, we've got shirts with the logos on it, with the X19, the 850, the 124. Those are all on t-shirts. And those all go to help support the cars, getting them back on the road and things like that. So I really appreciate that. And make sure you guys are following me on Facebook and Instagram. I've got social media. We even have like a Facebook page group or where people can like share pictures and stuff. So make sure you guys join that as well. Lots and lots going on around the channel. So please make sure you guys are joining in in the conversation. I'd love to hear from you. And I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Nope, I think we're good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you.